Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World where we are going off the grid. That's right, we're checking it all, we're leaving society behind. We're going to take our two hands, a bit of equipment, we're going to see if we can't make it out in the forest, out in the woods, out in the wilderness. We're going to see what we can do to keep ourselves alive using only our wits and a little bit of stuff that uh, I brought with us, or brought with me anyway. So, when I was younger, I used to kind of daydream about doing just this. Checking it all, saying goodbye to everybody, and going out into the uh, forest to see what I could do. See what I could make of myself. And, well, I'm not a young man anymore. And I figured if I wait too much longer, I wouldn't be able to do it at all. So, here I am. I, uh made the decision. I called up my buddy Ed. He's one of those guys, you know, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And uh, told him what we were, what I was going to do. And he sat down and we kind of made a list of the things we thought I probably need to get by. And he said he'd take care of it for me because, of course, he knows somebody who knows somebody. <laughs> and so... I trust him, mostly, so uh, I, I let him take care of it for me. Now, I didn't have a lot of money to spend, and uh, he understood that, because you don't just go plop yourself down in the middle of a forest and say, here I am, it's mine. No. You have to buy the land, and that's what took most of my money, buying, buying some land out in the middle of nowhere, I could get away from it all, and I did just that, and my property starts right here on this end of the bridge, and as you can see, Ed did, did pretty well for me, I love this old pickup, I absolutely love it, and uh, a trailer, I've been hauling stuff for the last few days to get up here, now seven hours away from the nearest town or city. That's a long hike. So if something goes wrong, I'm kind of on my own, which is exactly what I was looking for. Now, I've, I've gotten started a little bit, kind of getting a feel for the, the stuff Ed sent with me. Well, and that I agreed to. We have this little skid steer. It's not the greatest skid steer that ever was, but so far it looks like it's going to do the job for for us and across the river here now like I said it took me three or four days to get it all up here but here it is and this is it there's no buying more I've got three hundred and seventy one dollars left in my pocket and uh, this old tractor this tractor is fabulous listen to that thing Again, it's old, but we'll keep it running. I did bring a toolbox with me, so we can work that out. This fabulous mower. Got a tether. I think this is uh, some kind of cultivator. A rake here. Got a plow. I made sure to bring some seed and fertilizer, because I'm definitely going to need uh, to be able to plant something to, to eat great fertilizer spreader look at that thing that's a beauty and uh, this forage trailer small little forage trailer I don't know how useful that's gonna be right out of the gate but we're gonna find out anyway that's it that's all I got and like I said not buying any more seven hours away from civilization <coughs> Now, there is a, a logging or a sawmill not too terribly far away. So, it might be possible to uh, make a little money off of timber and such. Probably be able to do that without too much trouble. Um, but right now, all I care about, I mean, I'm, I didn't come out here to make money. I came out here to live. To have fresh air 
get away from the TVs and the cell phones and and the drama and all the bull pucky. <laughs> so the first thing I want to do is clear out this area in front of the bridge. I've got a purpose for it. I got a plan, and uh, and it kind of is going to need to be where where I store my stuff because at least for the time being, because I'm not sitting out here, you know, there's a bridge there for a reason. The The main road leads up to it. You can't get much farther than that. I mean, you can. You can hike back, but getting any kind of a truck or tractor equipment back here with all these branches and stuff. But we're going back. We're going way back in there. And, uh, until I get back to where I think is a good place to hang my hat I need to get some of this area up here cleaned out so that's my first goal today is to start chopping trees getting them cut down and uh, try not to speak quite as redundantly now you know when you chop a tree and you gotta take all the branches off and the best way to do that is just kneel down and run along the tree. Sometimes they'll get a little stubborn and you got to uh, find a cut mark like that and we're just gonna take that tip off. That's not too bad. I was cutting those logs a little bit short earlier. Let's try this. That's pretty long now. I cut the the light end off to kind of make a measuring stick. I guess I should have kept my measuring stick from the first tree. I guess in this case it's a measuring log, but... I can grab that, slide it along. Tried too many bushes, man. Maybe I should bring that mower over and... Oh, it looks like we're about... And I'm sinking in up to my waist here. Softer in this spot than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so, I don't know, for operating on a budget, I think Ed did pretty well for me. And then again, you know, I've, I'm a city boy. I've, uh, haven't really, uh, played out in the woods very much. S certainly have never been a logger or anything like that, so... Um... <laughs> come on now. There you go. Yeah, talking to Ed, you know, I was saying how this is out in the forest and it's really heavily wooded. Kind of showed him some pictures of the, the land. And he started talking about all this logging equipment. And these tree harvesters and all that. And I was like, okay, well, Ed, that's all nice and, and good, but um, my budget took most of what I had just, just to buy the property, so I don't think, you know, a $400,000, $500,000 tree harvester is really in the plan here. 
So we had to come up with smaller solutions. And you know what? I have no complaints so far. I mean, I don't mind working with the chainsaw. And it's kind of fun, you know, learning to operate a little piece of equipment like this just to start out. We just, uh, my plan is to get this area cleared right here so I can get my stuff across the river. Get it a little bit protected. Whoa, that was a big tree, wasn't it? And then maybe check out the sawmill. Get rid of some of this wood. I don't know. I don't know if they'll take it all. There's only a couple guys working there, as I can see. And <laughs> as I can tell, they must be living up there or living in the sawmill because. Come on now. Sometimes, if you can't crawl along the tree, this is just the best way to get it done. Chop off the end. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this one too. Really? <laughs> well, let's see if we can push it over. There it goes. Well, these trees just aren't going to make it easy on me. Try this one. That's working a little bit better. get one more down before we start loading. That was doing an impressive roll there. This way again. I'll move this way. Oh, 
Ooh, I about secured myself. Okay. Get my measuring stick here. I'm not trying to get them perfect or anything. I just want them to be a little bit, a little bit the same. Yeah, that's a seriously big tree. Let's get them loaded up. Actually, I forgot to do one thing here. I wanted to throw a different strap on here. There we go. Release that one. Keep those logs from rolling off open sided trailer and all that jazz. funny I really at ground level those look much bigger <laughs> much longer than what they actually ended up being I'm gonna stop that You know, it's probably a good thing that I'm cutting these shorter than I think, just because I'm, I mean, these are pretty heavy as they are. I'm not sure, uh, you know, if they were much thicker than that, if, uh, or much longer than that, if, if we could handle them. See what I mean? They are just falling all over the place. Come on, well, that's not going to do it. Strap that one. Pull that. We can pull that strap off later. <laughs> I'm actually kind of impressed by how well this uh, little skid steer is handling these big logs. It's actually doing a pretty nice job. I'd probably be doing an even better job if it uh, had somebody operating it that knew what he was doing. But, I don't know. I don't think I'm doing too horrible. Don't want to end up in the lake.
sometimes if you just can tip that back far enough, loosen up the claw, they'll roll back in there for you and you can carry them a little bit easier. If I can uh, can grab this one before it rolls off into the water and takes me with it. gonna make it easy on me. Now for the next few days, I'm pretty much gonna be sleeping in the truck. Obviously, I think I might that let that one go for a minute. <laughs> uh, I don't have a shelter built yet. That's gonna gonna be a while. And uh, gonna be a lot of uh, wood to clear out of my way before I get to a place where I really want to build my house. And beyond that, I mean, there's so much to do. That's one of the things, you know, you start thinking, you got these little daydreams going on, you start thinking about this stuff, and you don't think about just how much work it's going to take. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's no boss here. There's no bank looking for a payment. There's no credit card company looking for them, you know, looking to get paid. At the end of the day, it's you. Wow. It's you and you know what can you do to to make this all work out for yourself. At the end of the day when you're done, you know this land is paid for free and clear. So, at the end of the day, when I go into my house, it's going to be a house that I built with my own two hands. It's going to be a place I can call my own. Nobody can come and claim any part of it. And, uh, that's, that's one of the most important things as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot to be said for pride of ownership when you've, uh, particularly when you, you're the one who's had to, uh, had to build it for yourself. Now let's go check out the sawmill and see what they can do for us. And this is the beauty of a truck. I just love it. So even getting back where I got, I mean getting back to that bridge back there, was a long trek through the woods. And I came past these old buildings here, but I don't know what they're good for. Definitely not the sawmill. And all we want is the sawmill. See if they'll take this wood off my hands, kind of get a feel for what they're willing to take from me. They didn't look like they were working too much. I mean, I didn't see any trucks coming in and out. I didn't see any saws running. I didn't even hear any, uh, 
hear anything going on. You know, I'm not like, whoa, where am I? Oh, there we go. I was just, can't tell the forest for the trees here sometimes. There we go. Now we're back on track. Yeah, here's the sawmill I was talking about right here. And it looks to me like they want a wood right in here. better practice than this by now. There we go. Come on. Okay. Release the straps. And find out if our wood is worth anything. Um, our wood was worth a little bit. We got almost $9,000 off that little trailer load. Did they take it all? Heck yeah. So we're not broke anymore, but at this point in time, it doesn't matter really because, uh, well, there's nowhere to spend it unless I want to take that seven-hour drive back to civilization, and that's just not going to happen. I came out here to do my own thing, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Will that change at some point? I mean... You know, even the mountain men were known for, for, uh, going into town once or twice a year, every six months or so, to get, to pick up supplies. Well, that worked out pretty well, so... I'm going to load up some more of this wood move my measuring stick first though. I knew that was a bad place for it. I just don't have a good one. I'll put it under this tree. Alright. I wonder if I can maybe load a little better next time. I don't know. And at least these these logs will be uh, the same size-ish. Try to get one more load in. Come on, get off there. Okay. Oh, that one hasn't been cut. Okay.
but that's not worth anything. Goodbye, little piece of wood. I'll bet that's not either. Alright, that leaves just the the watery one and then the the big tree there that I need to cut. Pretty nervous about this. Need to be super careful here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that was close. That was close. I really thought I was going in. Remember, Harv, there's nobody out here to save you. <laughs> no one here to save you at all. our measuring stick. Well, I think I'm going to cut this tree and then please stop. There we go. Cut this tree, get it loaded, go uh, take it over to the sawmill, get it out of the way. and then probably call it a day. can't see what I'm doing for all the shrubbery. I'm going to need to get that mower over here and take care of that. Now we... Yeah, we're done. We're done at the end at this point. Okay. So this can go straight on the truck. Oh, that was way longer than I expected it to be. Yeah, we can get, I think we can get this tree on here. Let me strap that. That's it. Just this, this, this stick. So what was that? Four, four full tree, five full trees that we took down. Well, I took down one before, before we started in here. Oh, get up there. Okay. Apparently, the measuring stick has grown a very close attachment to me. <laughs> just will not get let go. All right. You know, I think that's why I like this truck. That, look how simple this is. Clean, simple. It doesn't have a lot of digital crap in it. It doesn't have all you know, bunch of bells and whistles. I have to crank down the window if I want some fresh air. Just 
getting back to a simpler life, man. That's the whole point. You know, if I eat, it's because I created something to eat. I created something to eat. I didn't go to a grocery store and buy some prepackaged chemical laden junk. Now, don't get me wrong, I I have no problem with it. Um, you know, I like hot dogs and canned chili as much as the next guy, but uh, the point is, if I'm eating, it's because I made something for myself to eat and not just cooked it. I, this is that weird turn, isn't it? And I'm going to hit that tree again. There we go. See, there's nobody up here. I mean, there's plenty of uh, logs stacked around here, but there's not a soul around. was a better load, $9,400. I don't know why I uh, get so focused on that, because again, this is not about making money. So this is the beginning of getting off the grid. If you've enjoyed this episode, I'd appreciate it if you would hit the like and subscribe buttons and be a pal. This is going to be my first somewhat roleplay episode and I hope it comes across well um, a little bit nervous about it if I'm honest but I think things have started off about as well as can be expected I think it's going to be a slow build and I don't know how many episodes are going to uh, play out on this but we'll play it by ear if people start enjoying it then uh, we could extend it and we'll see. Who knows what could happen in the future when we go off the grid. So until next time, you all take care.